you mate. Cards on the table. Uh, normally when I've spun the camera up, and I'm at this point, <laughs> I've got this far, I've normally got some kind of narrative to spin. <laughs> right? I've got some kind of story to tell ready to go, how the, the, so the, the product that I'm about to show you is useful for order software, you know, how it's beneficial to us and how it works great with this and we're great with that. And hey, this is this is awesome. Mm, yeah, not this time. <laughs> Bit of an unusual one. Uh, it, it wouldn't have made a video, in fact, but the this is the Optiplex 7090 Ultra and it's just it's just not really suitable for us in the world of sort of 3D card and the general audience and arena that I pitch videos into. But still, in my view, worthy of a video because it's fascinating. This fascinated me on a number of different levels. But yeah, depending on where you are from in the world, you know how big the shelves are in your local shops. It's about the size of a chocolate bar. And it's a thin client, right? It slots into a monitor sleeve like this. And then that monitor sleeve as the monitor, you know, whoosh goes on the front. It's super low profile. So it's basically a computer that fits in your monitor stand. But they're not new, right? They've been around a while. But normally they, they're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel for performance. This, however, when I fired this up and ran this through all my benchmarks that I do, was putting out numbers that I, I, genu I really genuinely didn't expect to ever see from something like this. And that's kind of why I'm making this video, because this is more of a representation of how far things have come. And I, people have beat on Intel over the last year or so for, for all kinds of reasons, mostly because of gains. But when you see what this is doing, and where things are at now and what that means for the future. It's it's actually quite exciting. But anyway, in here is an 11th gen Intel i5 1145G7. So it's a, it's a mid-tier uh, Tiger Lake based i5. Apparently, uh, some of the publications are saying that you can get these with the i7 version of that CPU family, which is the same i7 that was in the Latitude 9420 that I reviewed on the channel not too long ago. That's the i7 1185G7. And also the XPS that I've got has the i7 1165G7. Although I've not seen those on Dell's website specced like that, but apparently some publications have said you can. Eight or 16 gigs of RAM and 256 or half a terabyte of PCI Express NVMe storage in here. Mate, we're talking specs, so sort of comparable to kind of premium thinning lights in that, which is all again, well and good, but like, how does it perform in a little tiny wedged chassis like this? Like surely it just can't be any good. Uh, and surely, you know, there's not a lot you can do with it. Now, like look at the ports on the bottom, right? You've got two USB-A's, all display port, ethernet, right? You've got your power brick, USB-C, and then on one side, you've got USB-A. You've got Thunderbolt 4, right? That works with the Dell dock, although you can't power this using the Dell dock. You can just use all the devices and peripherals. And then you've got headphone jack, it's mental. And then if you use the monitor hub, which uh, you, I would highly recommend that you do, you buy one of Dell's hub monitors. This gets all of its power delivery through USB-C cable. You don't even need to use the power brick into this. It just powers through USB-C cable. A PC that's powered by USB. Like that's that's what this is, right? Bear that in mind. So, I fired this up, I built it, fired it up, ran the first thing I do with every PC, I ran Envmark. This scored higher on Envmark than the PC I used in my Autodesk University class to demonstrate three years ago what the pinnacle of workstations were. Now, if you don't know that story, three years ago, I did a class at Autodesk, I was a speaker at Autodesk University. My class was to advise Autodesk's customer base how to spec the best workstation for Autodesk Inventor. And I had a PC there that was the pinnacle, the best money could buy three years ago in 2018. It was an HP Z2 G4 Tower workstation. The CPU was a desktop grade Xeon. It was a Coffee Lake derivative uh, of the 8700K, i7-8700K CPU. Six cores, desktop Xeon. This beat that G2 Tower workstation at the end of March which I, uh, I did not expect. Because bear in mind, that workstation is only three years old. There's people in production still using those workstations. And these coming out today have more power for single-threaded sort of applications, the likes of Autodesk's flagship design software. And that's what kind of got me so fascinated about these. But like I said, I'm not 
going to stand here and say, well, that means you should think about these. No, no, not at all. No, it's just more of a progression in CPU architecture that this is on and what that means for the future. Because this, this doesn't have discrete graphics, right? It doesn't have Quadro or the new RTX professional graphics in here. It doesn't have you know, a decent VRAM buffer or anything like that. It doesn't have professional drivers. It's just more the fact that in terms of CPU raw horsepower, that has more CPU raw horsepower, single threaded and multi -thre multi threaded horsepower than desktop and mobile workstations from only three plus years ago. What? And then I ran it through multiple other benchmarks like PC Mark 10 and V Ray benchmarks, you know, the synthetics and Cinebench. And the majority of those tests, this landed closer to the flagship. Dell Precision Workstation, the mobile workstation from the 10th generation era than the 10th generation era Dell Precision Workstation was to today's Dell Precision Workstation. Like that's how good this is. It's closer to that last year's Dell is to this year's Dell. So yeah, I'm just, I was just staggered by the numbers this puts out in just such a tiny little form factor that you can just slot in your monitor stand. Uh, it's user serviceable as well, right? It's just got this sort of little sliding clip sort of mechanism. The SSD, the system fan, and the Wi-Fi card can just be removed out and serviced. It's like a little laptop motherboard in a in a chassis, and it just slots in like that and off you go. Who's it for? I don't know. I don't know. You can call it a thin client, but this is way overkill for a thin client, right? I was thinking when I asked for it, like, oh, you know, Windows 365, you can run cloud sessions on this, this has got far too much power to be running cloud terminals on, right? Possible VMs, maybe? Uh, you know, you could maybe have it as a VM terminal, run off of, but then you'd have to run off external storage for VMs. I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but definitely not 3D card, right? Because of the last lack of ISV support, but more to the point, it's the fact that this has that much power today, right? And that's how far things have come. You look on the Infomark leaderboard, you look at where this is on the leaderboard, and then you just start expanding everything below this. It's frightening. It's frightening what's below this on the leaderboard. But yeah, I just thought that was interesting. That's the Optiplex 7090 Ultra Form Factor. Um, I'd probably have this as just a little, a PC just sort of in the, in the kitchen, right? You know, or, I don't know, in, in a kid's room or something like that. Just without any massive cables, without a tower, right? It's no form factor, minimal mess. Uh, that was in, in more power than really ever going to need for what something like this would be asked to do. But it's just, it's just, just mental how, how much you get out of that. Uh, and at the price point as well, so it's £700 for the i5 version and then £200 for the monitor. So you're looking at around £900 for something like this all in. It's not a bad deal. There you go. That's the Optiplex 7090. It's, yeah, if you're on a super old platform and you're thinking to yourself, mm, yeah, I know. Right, that's that's all I've got. Thanks very much for watching Tech 3D. If you found that useful, do get subscribed if you're not already. Slam the like button and ding the notifications bell. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks very much. Peace.